What if everything you have deemed as impossible really was possible? What have you known and believed was possible your whole life? You just didn't know how to actualize it. Come and discover a world of infinite possibilities on Outside the Impossible with Venus Castleberg. On this show, we will share pragmatic tools to create the life and living you truly desire. And now, your host, Venus Castleberg. Hello, everyone. So happy to have you guys here. Really, really, really excited um, to have Betsy McLaughlin today. Um, Betsy McLaughlin is a best-selling international author of eight books, a certified facilitator of access consciousness, a transformational coach, and so much more. Betsy believes in the possibilities of creating a life you desire to live and works with her clients to release self-limiting beliefs. Betsy has totally changed her life. She knows it's possible to create what you desire and has seen amazing transformations in her clients' lives and is honored to witness their changes. Betsy has been featured on the Ask Bon Bon TV show, numerous radio shows, and telesummits. Betsy travels the world facilitating greatness with her clients. She is happy to consult with you and teach classes on any topic that looks um, and looks forward to talking with you. And for me personally, um, I just, Betsy, I just, I love your, your spirit. I love your, the, your lightness, your joy, your ease, even in the midst of like chaos, which was our topic today. Like, I'm like, you are just a rock to me. And I'm like, please show us how to do that. <laughs> oh my God. So, <laughs> so well, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Um, what a what a nice thing to hear. <laughs> I don't always really feel like I'm um, a rock in the middle of chaos. So that's <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you're and so thank welcome. Thank you for having me. I I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, one of the things that I've I've been taking on has been I've been interviewing um, access consciousness certified facilitators and um, specifically because the tools of access consciousness have changed my life in so many ways and I'm just inspired to get these tools out to more people to um, around the world and how better to do that than to promote other facilitators and um, hopefully people will be attracted to somebody and want to work with them. Um, and create changes in their own personal lives. So I'd love to just start off today and like um, maybe learn a little bit about your story with Access Consciousness. Like when did you discover Access Consciousness? Oh, okay, thank you. So it was um, about seven years ago and I was in a just in a place where I was pretty depressed and I had a lot of health issues and just things weren't going very well at all in my life. Like, and it was just progressively over many years getting worse and worse and worse. And to the point where I was just like, I'm just not even sure I really want to be here anymore. If this is the way life is and what's the point of all of this. And, you know, just kind of in that real negative spiral downwards and, I had gone to some therapy and that helped a little bit and just different things were kind of working, but not really. And a friend of mine actually told me, um, we were on the phone talking and she drove by a place that had a sign for Reiki and she's like, Oh, Reiki. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And my whole body was excited about it. So, you know, I've always been interested in it. Maybe now's the time. So I actually went and had a Reiki session. And from there, I just started exploring alternate, you know, like different things that, you know, might, might not be as mainstream, but I knew that something different needed to happen for my life. And I liked, I had really liked how peaceful the Reiki was. And I just went on a journey of of that and became a Reiki master. And then from there, I met, you know, diff, some different people. And a friend of mine called me one day and said, hey, I, I have this thing I think you really enjoy. And it was, uh, she was telling me about excess bars, which is um, a very gentle touch to the head, which releases a lot of different energies 
And being the person I was, I went in line and found somebody near me because, again, it was my whole body was very excited about it. And it was like, yes, try that. Like, okay. (laughs) And that's one thing I have learned is I'm sure you, you know, I know you have a lot of body awareness too. And so I went and I had a session and I couldn't believe how different I felt. It was for the first time in a very, very long time, I didn't have the constant barrage of mind garbage going on. You know, like in a lot for me, a lot of it was very negative self-talk all the time and constantly putting myself down and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't have that. And I remember thinking or not thinking, honestly, going, wow. And I, I just had so much like space around me. So from that, I said, I've got to find out more about this. What is this? Oh, my gosh. If everybody did this, think how different the world would be. And because I had so much peace and calm. Um, so I learned how to do it. And then from there, I learned a lot of the questions and tools that I know you talk about and I talk about all the time as well. And I just kept taking classes. And so, and be, I decided at some point along the journey to become a certified facilitator so that I could again, you know, facilitate and empower people really to learn these tools and to know what works for you. And one of the coolest things for me is that there is no one size fits all. You know, you learn and you take what works for you. And so that was um, seven years ago, basically. And then fast forward to today, where I really, I'm no longer the depressed, miserable, um, person who doesn't want to be here anymore. And so I'm super, super grateful that I was, you know, I asked questions and I found something that truly, truly changed my life and works amazing for me and so many other people. So that was a long story, but thank you for the question. No, I love it. Yes, no, that's great. Access consciousness has changed. I mean, obviously, all of our lives, <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't be here doing it. So, um, awesome. Well, we thank you for sharing all that. And uh, we named this episode Creating from Chaos, because I knew you were kind of going through this um, chaotic moment in your life. And I was like, okay, so how do we use this to our advantage? Um, and I wanted to know, well, let's let's just start something with something a mm-hmm. little simpler for our listeners, because maybe somebody out there doesn't really know what we're talking about. So would you be willing yeah. to explain to our listeners what the definition of chaos is? Let's just start there. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Um, so chaos to me is actually a beautiful symphony of everything going on all at once. <laughs> and... and when I remember, like, for such a long time, I used to think that chaos was, like, this bad thing. And, um, you know, if you didn't have control over everything, then, you know, your life just was out of control. And I have since learned that that's actually kind of the opposite and that chaos is where things are actually created a lot of times. And so if you're, if you're willing to let go of what you might perceive control is, to me, that's where the magic starts to be created. Hmm. Uh, so another way of saying control would be order, right? So it's mm-hmm. kind of the opposite of chaos, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so if we're looking at... What's the difference between creating with chaos versus creating with order? Could you say more about that? Mm, okay. Creating creating with chaos versus creating with order. Okay, so when you, if you watch, a, to me, a great example of this is a child. Or even, I'm right now caring for my mother's puppy because she's having some health issues. And the puppy is... Oh, five months old, and I watch how he plays. And he doesn't play, you know. He'll get it, and he finds and he finds everything on the floor and things. We're like, where did he come up with this 
and he'll come running in with a straw. And we're like, I didn't even know there was a straw on the ground. But he finds it, right? So he comes running in with a toy, and then he goes and gets another toy, and then he'll get another one. And before you know it, he's got four or five things in front of him. And then he goes back to the first thing. And there's no order to how he's playing. He's just mm-hmm. playing, and he's totally in the moment. Uh, and so that, to me, is being, you know, like, so our our definition of what being in order is, and it doesn't mean that it's a confusion or a disorder. It just means that there's no control over how you create or how you play. So um, it's kind of like another way to look at it for me would be, let's say you're cooking, right? And you're making a soup or a stew and you've got a lot of ingredients, but instead of measuring out exactly, well, I need, you know, a quarter or a teaspoon of salt, you just kind of put a little bit of salt in and then you taste it. And then maybe you'll add a little bit more where you're, so you're willing to create beyond the, maybe what the written recipe is. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it's kind of like A plus B equals C is more orderly, whereas mm-hmm. we're kind of all over the map with um, one of the one of the ways I've always envisioned it has been like kind of like when a volcano goes off or um, mm-hmm. when you know, there's mass destruction. And then but the chaos of that actually creates this new fertile earth so that then the new beginnings come. The, the, oh, um, so true. The creation come. So. Awesome. But so but you said some you said something in the beginning which is so true for most of us is that you said that you thought chaos was wrong. And we all have been taught that like there's chaos is wrong and bad and like we should be orderly and in control and all of that stuff. So um uh-huh. could you speak a little bit more to that like how would somebody maybe change that point of view? <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, coming from a control freak that I totally am, um, and nowhere like I used to be, but I, I really did have that point of view that, you know, like I couldn't be out of control and I couldn't be chaotic at all, and it was really bad and wrong. And so to go from that point of view to the point of view where, like, and sometimes, believe me, you know, I still get those moments where I'm like, oh, my God, this is really, you know, like I'll go to that space of, oh, my God, this is out of control. And then I'm like, then I will ask myself, well, wait, is it really out of control or do you have some old definitions kind of still running in the background? So I will ask those kind of questions. And then if there are, I'm like, oh, OK, so I will destroy you know those points of view and then like okay what really is going on here and is it you know is what am I aware of so is this chaos is it out of control is it something else so Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you talk to your listeners a lot about asking questions Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah we do but it's funny how how many different topics we've talked about with asking questions. So it's also always great to bring it back to, and you can ask questions here too. (laughs) Like like when you're, when your life feels out of control, ask, how does it get better than this? What else is possible? (laughs) So yeah, um, yeah, Yeah. for sure. Totally. Totally. No, from that space of like, okay, this isn't wrong. You know, so this is one of the questions I love. If, you know, if it isn't wrong, then what else is possible here? Mm. So, so if I'm going to the place of this is so wrong, this is so bad, it's like, well, wait a minute. If it wasn't wrong, then what else is it? You know, that really can help me, like, get out of those, that again, that order, that control, the way it has to be, and allow, you know, other things to show up because could you imagine you know even your definition of the volcano Mm -hmm. could you imagine you know if if nature was trying to control this volcano that was going off (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, yeah, and um, and it's it's almost like there's so much more possible if you just let the universe be the expansive space of <clears throat> chaos, which really is more of a definition of uni the universe. The universe doesn't. Uh -huh. there, there are things that may seem like they are functioning in order, but if you look at the like the mass of it. It's really chaos. So, but to try to like define it or limit it or, or like even the, the magical way that we can create things in our life, if we tried to define those things, if we tried mm -hmm. to understand those things, then does that sometimes limit magic and the possibilities that are there? So it almost seems to me like chaos has a, a lot more possibility to it than if we were to have everything be controlled and ordered and um, like we knew ahead of time what every what I, what what, it, what everything was going to happen. <laughs> like how boring would that be? <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so thank you for um, for that. That was great. And um, welcome. I had another question, but I think that one's actually good. We should wait till after the break before I open that one up. So let's, um, <laughs> so what would you say about like, um, what would you say has changed for you, um, when you started creating more from chaos? And if that's oh my gosh. too big of a question, we can continue it after the break. So, <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It gives you. I guess we could start talking about it, and then I sure. know the break is coming yeah. up. But it's it's um, freedom, really. To when you when you if you can, I, I'm very visual. So as you asked that question, I could see like these kind of ropes around me and so when I don't have those ropes around me it's just you get lit you eliminate the constriction that you can put around yourself so mm -hmm. when you allow chaos you know and you allow things to be out of order and not know what's going to happen next it really it's fun it can be challenging it can be um, frustrating, you know, it can be all of those things. And what is created is always so far beyond anything that you can even imagine. So for me to create from that space of chaos is such a beautiful gift. Awesome. Thank you. And we'll continue that on the other side. If you guys have any questions for Betsy, please feel free to call in at 202-570-7057. Yay! Yay! <laughs> the best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. What is magnificent about you that you've never acknowledged? 
Are you ready to let your own light shine? What if you were 1,000 times more potent and powerful than you give yourself credit for? What if there was a monthly call that is designed specifically to empower you to be all you can be? Would that be fun for you? Venus Castleberg is now offering a magnificent monthly membership for only $50 a month. Mention this ad and receive 50% off. To register or for more information about the membership, events, and services, please go to www.venuscastleberg.com. Is now the time to be different? This is the story of a very special woman. Just a few knew about her superpowers. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her Mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Betsy McLaughlin, and we're talking about creating and chaos. Um, so, Betsy, right before the break, you were you were talking about um, what creating with chaos is like for you. I also wanted to um, ask you something. So, so I know we all have. I'm not gonna, you know, we all have things going on in our lives. Like mm -hmm. life happens, right? It just continues mm -hmm. to happen no matter what. And sometimes <laughs> it does seem like there's more going on than others, and it's just like, which feels a lot like chaos. You know, and not wanting to make mm -hmm. one of the things that just about you is even in things going on around you, chaos going on around you, you have this ability to be in, to stay engaged. And I was oh. wondering if you could speak to how do you stay engaged rather than disconnecting and withdrawing? Like when things wow. are, there's a lot going on, how do you keep leaning in? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question oh my gosh and um again you know it's really interesting to hear someone else's perspective because mm -hmm. i look at that and go oh my gosh i think that i do withdraw so and then i was like looking at it as you were saying it thinking well is that actually true and mm -hmm. you know so the places where i might not allow myself to withdraw and then the places where I do it's like oh those are really interesting questions that I've never actually looked at so for me staying engaged um wow that's an amazing question so how do you stay engaged in the face of chaos <laughs> and especially when <laughs> everything around you is kind of you could almost feel like you've got explosions everywhere and Tornadoes. So, um, right? Yeah, tornadoes, <laughs> explosions, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, and as I know, everybody listening knows what we're talking about, that energy of, and then you want to, part of you wants to go and, like, hide under the covers and let right. me know when it's safe Isn't there a bomb shelter shelter somewhere? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> when it's over <laughs> one. Ah, what do I do and you know it's it's really just like one of you actually said it your commercial actually said it like what if you're I think you said what if you're a thousand times more was it more potent powerful mm -hmm. than you've ever given yourself credit for I was like oh I love that question and it's so true so even you're telling me things you see in me that are like, oh, gosh, I've never even actually looked at that. So what if everybody listening, what if we all are way more powerful and way more capable and way more gifted than we've ever, ever given ourselves credit for and or acknowledged? And even in that space of acknowledgement, you can kind of feel your, your whole being go, Oh, yeah, right. I can do this. I am capable. I am powerful. I am totally able to roll with the punches, you know, ride. The, the, the other day I was thinking I kind of felt like I was um, 
a surfer that has never surfed, but is like, you know, being on the the surfboard of you know, big tsunamis coming in and just like, okay, hang on for the ride. And, you know, like, and then these questions and the, the, of what else truly is possible is one of my favorite go-to questions where no matter what is coming down the pike, it's like, all right, what else is possible? I mentioned already my mom's been in the hospital for um, six weeks now. And, you know, that what's being even projected at her by her, what she's saying about her health, what doctors are saying. Uh, and I'm always in that question, even no matter what I'm being told about what's going on with her. Okay, what are the infinite possibilities here beyond everything sitting in this little box? And she's already way defied the odds, and she has for a couple of years now with different things going on. And so to me, that's one of the greatest questions is, all right, what else truly is possible? And, you know, when you're faced with different things, you don't even realize the strength you have. But you can't, you know, for me, it's not, I, I can't fall apart. You know, I've got to keep going. And yes, do I have my moments? Absolutely. And I will allow myself to have those moments, you know, whether I'm crying or I'm upset or whatever. It's like, okay. And to actually allow it sometimes is all that's required. Mm. Um You know, sometimes if I don't allow myself to have a couple of moments of tears or frustration and I pretend that it's not there, then that, for me, will make it a lot worse. So if I allow myself, if I need to cry, I'll cry for a couple minutes or or whatever Mm -hmm. and then just be like, all right, and what next? You know, and remind myself that, and I'm sure, you know, you've talked about this too, that sometimes it's like, really, what can you choose next? And living like, okay, what's next? And then what's next after that? So you're you're in that space of, okay, let's do this. And no matter what, I got this. And to know you've got your own back is tremendous. Because honestly, for a long time, I didn't know that I had my own back. I didn't know that I could do this. Now I know, no matter what, I've got this. And there's such a peace with that, just to know that, as your commercial says, you are, what if you're, you know, a thousand times more powerful than you've ever, ever acknowledged. And that no matter what, you've got this. That's beautifully put. And and it, and it really reminds me that and you know that i'm not religious but it, there's a great saying out there so um that you know god never gives you more than you can handle and mm-hmm. i mean it's true there's always you always have everything that you need desire require to handle whatever you're given whether that's you mm-hmm. given to you by you or god doesn't matter but the saying is you have it like you don't mm-hmm. there isn't anything that you're missing to to handle what's what's thrown at you and i mean we and we all have stuff it's life right so mm-hmm. so yeah cool so have you ever been in an experience where you felt like you had to choose which fire to put out mm-hmm so how do you make Absolutely. That <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes it's the fire that's closest to you. <laughs> you know? Oh, no, the fire that's closest to you? That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're in immediate danger. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's really like, and that's one of the, the great things about playing with the energies of things and asking what requires my attention right now. So when you have 20 things that you could do right now and 
you know, ask which one requires my attention. And mm-hmm. it could be something that only need that you only need to do for a couple of minutes. It could be mm-hmm. something that needs a couple of hours. But if you allow yourself to be tapped into the energy of every single thing you're creating, your creations will tell you. They will believe me. They get loud. You know, if you're ignoring something or not giving it attention and it desires attention, it will tell you. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's one of my favorite things. It's like, all right, who requires my attention next? What's next? <laughs> <laughs> and that really is creating from chaos because, it, you know, mm-hmm. this 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 reality says make a list of to do things and do the yep. first one. And then the second one, the third, and then you're talking, you're talking like, okay, which, where should I put my attention in this 10 seconds? Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know that sometimes it's not even the one that makes like any sense. You could be, you've got a deadline tomorrow of something and then yet it's not the thing that is asking for your attention immediately and what I have found is if you try to force yourself to do something then it takes for me it will take way longer than if I'm following the energy and then Mm. um you know so so, and then sometimes you still have to do something because you've got deadlines I'm not saying don't do your deadlines but you know really if, if you have you know that ability to play with the energies of it and what what's next oh. beautiful and so do you would you say you ever experience maybe what's called overwhelm mm-hmm. absolutely so, um so <laughs> how, how do you how do you deal with that <laughs> <laughs> yes and um, it's no one no, i used to get it all the time and then i couldn't do anything because i'd be like frozen i don't know what to do so i wouldn't do anything and, mm-hmm. you know, that, and then I would get mad at myself or then everything would be late or, you know, and it just kind of would compound itself on top of each other. So then again, it's that same question of, like, all right, what, what can I do now? What's, what's next? What requires my attention? And sometimes it's getting up and getting away from whatever it is that, you know, like, let's say if it's a work project. It might be getting up and taking a walk and getting away from the computer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, so it, it can, and that's what I'm saying, it doesn't always make sense logically, but it can give you some freedom to just kind of get out of that moment of the overwhelm. Um, and it might also be allowing yourself that moment of having that overwhelm. But it's, and for me also, it's breaking it down. Like if I'm really, let's say I have a room that is a disaster in my, you know, in what I've decided is a disaster. You know, it's a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up or put away or whatever. It's like, all right, well, what if I break it into smaller pieces? So instead of my entire house needing to be clean, what if it's just a room? And then in that room, you know, so I'll break it down so it's not so, so it doesn't feel so overwhelming. And so for me, those little tricks can can make a difference and gets me out of feeling frozen where I can't, in frozen in activity, in like total, I can't do anything. And so, all right, what action can I take right now? Mm. Um, yeah. So that's how I can turn it around from being frozen into doing nothing into actually doing something that will change the energy and the frustration or overwhelm that I'm feeling. That's brilliantly put. And it, you know, it just reminds me of what you said about like, um, if I guess, what did I want to say about that? It was one of those thoughts that came in, went out. (laughs) I was like, where did that go? (laughs) 
<laughs> so, folks, this is creating from chaos. It's like, right? Okay, you think you're about to say something, and then suddenly that thought disappears, and you're like, I don't know what I was just about to say. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, then we'll just move on to the next one. <laughs> and laughing is always a great thing. Always yes, great yeah. Thing. Yeah. Well, it, that, it is such a great thing because because it, it, you know, just think about it, folks, just for a second here. If you think about mm -hmm. order and control and like getting it right and like all that, like how light does that make you feel or how heavy does that make you feel like? Right. It's so much work almost to try to keep it that way. But when you're creating from chaos and you're in the joy of it and in the moment with it and and like Betsy was saying, she's like, Sometimes, you know, getting up and walking away from the computer is what is required, even if it, there's a deadline. It's like that, uh -huh. there's so much more ease in that and just uh -huh. being like, okay, um, rather than this is the right way. I, I had, a, I'm actually um, I writing a book and I, and I called a friend because I was really feeling stuck and she said, well, would you be willing to just put it down for a week? Uh -huh. And I was like, what? Yep. <laughs> I was oh, like, what? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, you're supposed to do it every day. You're supposed to work on it every day. I was so stuck in the supposed to, which was not so yeah. much fun. <laughs> it was like, yeah. and and then sure enough, within a week of just walking away, so I gained so much clarity and so much more ease mm -hmm. that now there's there's a whole new flow to it. So, um, yeah, and it what a gift that so was true. to just be willing to walk away. Yeah. So true. So, so true. Yeah. So and, sometimes you know, you folks, ask, you have to go ahead. Yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. Sometimes folks, you have to. Oh, I was just going to say, you just have to walk away and, and see what that creates. So. No, it's so true. It, and, you know, the and that, that willingness to, there's that piece, you know, willingness to be out of control of, you know, you'd had decided at some point that you were supposed to write every day. And then it was becoming something that was becoming more of like a, an obligation or a force thing. And when you're, when you're trying to create something to do it from that, that energy is way different than really playing you know, with allowing the, the writing to come to you when it's time. And so when it's time, it will flow and it just, it will flow out of you, you know, like just a waterfall. And mm -hmm. when you are forcing it, it's like, you know, little drips. <laughs> right, totally. Definitely not the floodgates. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Awesome. Well, we're about to take another break. So thank you for that, Betsy. And um, for those of you who'd like to call in and ask Betsy some questions, ask us some questions about creating in chaos, you can do so at 202-570-7057. Best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility knowing you are supported by the universe. Who said life had to be hard and disempower you? 
What if all of life really could come to you with ease and joy? What if everything you saw as a wrongness of you was actually one of your greatest strengths? What if you could wake up every morning with a newfound sense of empowerment? Join Venus Castleberg to discover a world of infinite possibilities. Every weekday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, Morning Musings goes live on the Venus Castleberg CF Facebook page. What magic can we create every day? Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Shannon O'Hara? Yes. Yeah. Whoa! Go, girl! <laughs> well, welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Betsy McLaughlin. We're talking about creating in chaos. And it's been chaos all the way through. <laughs> so um, one of the things I was thinking about when I was kind of thinking about chaos and order, and I was, th I was thinking about, like, how much, like, truthfully, how uncomfortable chaos can be. Mm -hmm. um, so would you have anything to say about, like, being comfortable versus being uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a great question, Venus. And the, yeah, so the being uncomfortable really goes kind of with the whole being willing to be chaotic and not know what's going to happen and to have that willingness to not be so controlled and not be so ordered can, it's, again, that, that whole, it's like a different definition and a different way of being in the world and in your world. And um, I totally forgot what your original question was. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, because I just heard we have a guest and would like to ask you a question. So we're going to go there, and then we'll come back to that. <laughs> so Joseph's here. <laughs> This is Betsy, chaos. So we're just demonstrating <laughs> it for everybody. <laughs> uh, and thank you for being so real on that. Like, you didn't even try to spin that into, you know, making it sound good. That was awesome. Um, thank you. <laughs> my, I, my, my question is, so, um, so in, in trying to create something different in my business and in my life, um, it's, you know, I, I've always been taught, okay, A plus B equals C. You do this, you do uh -huh. this, you do this, and you're always going to get this result. Um, and and I, and in trying to create something, I'm really desiring to create something completely new, and I keep right. feeling like I'm falling back into old patterns. And into that, into that, like, um, so how do I get into that chaos, that that creative chaos point, I guess, or if that's what it's called. But I, I, I do feel a lot of times like I'm, like I am, uh, I, I keep, I keep coloring within the lines. It's not working. <laughs> well, I, you know what? That's actually your first step. You've already, you've already done it, and. You know, even that willingness to be like, hey, you know what? This actually isn't working so good for me anymore, and I'm willing to start erasing some of the lines. You know, you're actually already doing it. So would you be willing to give yourself some um, acknowledgement there? Mm. Mm. Yes. Awesome. And then, you know, what What else, you know, when you – so it, it, you, were, you talked about it so – perfectly like you've always been told like you've got a plus b equals c and da 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 and it's not that that's a wrongness first of all you know that it works pretty good and then for mm -hmm. me i got to this point it's like all right but what if there's greater what if there's far right. greater than everything that we have done up until now so it's not so it's like from here what else can we add to our lives to exponentialize it and have it 
be far beyond anything that we have the parameters that we've put around ourselves. So in that, Mm. what could you start creating that you up until now you have decided was something out of your control? Wow. I just went into like this, like all of a sudden my ears just got closed up. (laughs) It's like, like, stop. So, so, um, wow. (laughs) Okay. Can you ask me that one more time? (laughs) Because that was like all of a sudden my fingers went in my ears. It's like, no, no, la, 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 it's not listening. Right. And that's what we do. Right. So, so, um, are you a control freak? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how out of control are you willing to be? Right? And then you don't actually have to have a specific answer. It's just like looking at the energy of that and then being willing for something different to show up. So one of the things is is not so then if you don't know what the answer is, then what? You know, like are you willing to go on a grand adventure where you don't have all the answers, where it's not gonna be neat and clean and tidy and it might be a little messy and it might be really exciting and you know, like everything that you've decided is out of control and if you're willing for all of that to show up then, like then, 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 what, my friend, could be far greater than anything that you've already decided it's going to be like, look like, feel like, smell like. And just, I'm sure Venus has... Oh, Go ahead. The, every, what I get is receiving, is my unwillingness to receive yeah. in... in um, in certain things, I'm really good at it, and in other things, I resist mm-hmm. receiving like a big dog. Which mm-hmm. That is it. Oh gosh, mm-hmm. yikes! I'm like sweating <laughs> bullets right now. Holy crap! <laughs> okay, <You're welcome>. okay. <laughs> thank you, Betsy. You're awesome. <laughs> And that's that's what we do to ourselves. And it's, you know, it's like crazy what we do. So, yeah, so if you're willing to sweat those big bullets and see what else, you know, you could create now from that space, it's like that. Mm-hmm. these questions, like, I wonder what I could create from the, the space of chaos. Mm-hmm. And then without definition and allow whatever's going to show up to show up and keep asking and get out of the way. Right. So, and what I mean by get out of the way is like stop trying to control it all. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm I'm waving I'm waving both of my hands. You know, Miss Control Freak of magnitude over here. And um, so, when I was willing to stop trying to control everything and everyone around me, mm-hmm. what what came in and what is continually coming in is far greater than what I could even define as what was going to show up as. Wow. <laughs> Spell backwards, that's still wow. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. That's awesome. Thank you for answering that. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, thank you, Joseph, for the question. (laughs) Yeah, totally. And I'm sure, Venus, you've got stuff to add to that. (laughs) Well, I I mean, I guess I would just be like, you know, are are you willing to just play with it? Um, You know, and, and, and not, you know, the truth is, folks, none of this is about getting it right. There's not a right way and a wrong way of doing it. Mm -hmm. We invite you to this conversation of chaos because we there's a different possibility out there, but chaos is true to its word. There's no formula. (laughs) There's like, I can't tell you the right way to figure that out. I could say, Hey, why don't you play? Why don't you ask questions? Uh Why don't you say, Hey, you know, what would be, what would be fun here? And, 
and a different way of seeing this and perceiving this. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I love that you brought in that question of fun because, you know, to me for so long, I was so serious, right? And everything had to be serious and I wasn't allowed to have fun. And now it's just like, how much more fun can I have? And the more fun I add and the more joy I add to my life, the more chaos it shows up and it's like, bring it on. And the things I'm like constantly asked, you know, will I do this? Will I do this? And it's very rare that I actually say no. And I have no idea how I'm going to do it. And if it's light and fun and joyful, I say yes. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And so in from that, and that's the space of creating from chaos. I have no idea how it's all going to work out. And it always does. Because you are, you know, again, you guys all listening are so amazingly creative and and brilliant at whatever it is you're creating in the world. And so I wonder, like, how much more you can add to your life. And for me, Venus, the more I add, the more fun I have and the more that shows up. So what about for you? Yes, totally. Yeah. Gary Douglas says, if you're overwhelmed, add something. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like, what? It <laughs> doesn't make sense at all. Are you supposed to take stuff away and take it out? But it's true. I, it's like every, and, and I'm always surprised with everything that's added. And I've seen this for many people in my life, like everything that's added that like just more of the ability, ability to show up. Like they, yeah. it's almost, it's almost like we have to prove to ourselves that we are as powerful as we really are by saying, mm-hmm. oh, here's one more thing. We can handle it, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's another thing. We can handle that, too. And mm-hmm. I love that, too. Yeah. What would it take to 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 not necessarily be in the handle it, but I get to do this with fun and joy and yeah. ease? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, and totally. And I, you know, sometimes I'll laugh. I'm like, you asked for this, Betsy. Okay, you're right. I did. You know, like, all right, well, let's do it. Come on. All right. So be you, like, whatever you're asking for, when it shows up, be grateful. Even if you go to that space of overwhelm, it's like, all right, cool. Well, what else can I choose here? And in that, you know, like being willing, as Joseph, you know, called in, like being willing to let go of some of that control. Be like, okay, yeah, what else? What else? What else? What else? And in asking that question, what else? Oh, my gosh, you guys. Like, what else? What else could you add to your life right now? (laughs) Who else? And that's the other piece that I would love to talk about just a little bit is being willing to ask other people for contribution. Mm. And you don't have to do it all yourself. Oh, control freaks listening. Joseph. (laughs) (laughs) I'm taking notes for myself, too. You don't have to do it all yourself. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. We can call him on that one because we were just talking about that. So that's funny. (laughs) (laughs) So that's great. Um, and you know it's it's funny because they all seem to go together for me. It's like there's this there's this control and order and being comfortable, uh-huh. and then there's this chaos and letting go of control and being uncomfortable. Yeah. And what would it take yeah. for us to just be have the uncomfortable be the new norm and be okay yeah. and not make it yeah. wrong? You know. And, yeah. Totally. Really, being... To me, the status quo is boring. So yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. And and being willing to just leap and have mm-hmm. no freaking clue, you know, what's going to happen, and be like, all right, here we go, Whee! you know, and how much fun can you have as you're jumping? <laughs> <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> You may you may find out you have wings to fly, so why not at least try? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know what what happens if, even if you fall flat on your face? Okay, well then you pick yourself up right and dust yourself off and go again. So you know it's like oh, everywhere where we feel like we have to be perfect, right outside, right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. You know, like what yeah. what else? You know, like 
could you would you be willing to get rid of that point of view? Yes. And be willing to be willing to fall, be willing to be messy, be willing to be dumb, be willing like all the things you've been unwilling to do. What if in the willingness to be it or do it, it gives you like all possibilities? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Where there's <laughs> where there really is no limit. And I mean, the only limits that there are are the ones that we put on ourselves. So um true story <laughs> that's awesome well um betsy like i know and i love 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 the name of your radio show as a matter of fact i almost booked that and then i was like oh there's a radio show oh it's betsy <laughs> i was like that's so funny <laughs> so um but uh betsy has her own radio show what day and time does your radio show Air, I do. See. Thank you. So it's also on Ohm Times Radio. Love Ohm Times. Right. And <laughs> it is Tuesdays, uh, live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And the name of the show is Imperfect Brilliance. So that kind of goes right along with what we've been talking about today, right? Being willing to be the imperfectly brilliant being that you really are. And awesome. And then, and how can people find you? Um, I know they can listen to the radio show, but how can, do mm-hmm. you have a website? And, I do. Yeah. I do. I do. So it's called creating yumminess. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about, you know, how much yum can you create in your life? So, um, you can also find me um, on Facebook and my email is accessbetsy at gmail. And thank you so much for having me play with you today. I'm super grateful. So much fun. That was so great. Thank you, folks, for listening. Thank you, Joseph, for calling in for a question. And thank you, Betsy, so very much for talking about creating with chaos. That was kind of chaotic. (laughs) I loved it. Yes, it was. (laughs) Have a wonderful day, folks. chaotic. (laughs) Magical being that you truly be. (laughs) 